the pre-fill action tag is similar to the uh, default action tag in that it sets a fields value uh, to a static text or dynamic pipe text value uh, whenever the survey page is loaded. Um, the difference though is that the prefill will always overwrite the value. Um, and the default action tag is only applied when the instrument has no data in it yet. Um, so for example here, if I have first name and I put prefill equals manual, then when I open up this record, that value is, is filled in automatically and it's a read-only field, so you can't change it. Um, if it was default, it would load manual at first, but then it has text in it, so I can change it. So the prefill will lock those values in, um, whereas default won't. And so for the prefill action tag, for text boxes, all you have to do is surround your text with single or double quotes. And then um, for check boxes, uh, so, and you, you do the same thing for dates. You can have a prefill for a date. However, when you prefill a date value, it has to be year, month, day format, regardless of uh, what value you have set for this field. So if you prefill it with a date, it has to be year, month, day, and the date format here can be anything else. Um, same thing for drop downs. You just have to put in whatever value you want, and that's similar to the default action tag. You would just put in uh, the the option here, whatever number you have set for the choice. Um, same thing for radio buttons. You would set uh, and the same thing for the yes, no, because the yes, no is essentially a radio button. So you would set whatever value you want for the prefill. And for the checkboxes, you would just separate multiple values uh, by a comma, and that will fill those in automatically. So if we go to this example here, let me refresh. You'll see here that this prefilled with, with my name, date of birth, mail, and then I have it set for one, two, and three to check those. Uh, one of the interesting things to keep in mind, and maybe this is just a little bug that they got to fix, is that you can't change. Your, these are supposed to be read only. So I can't change this value. But if I click on the calendar, it lets me change the value. So it's supposed to be read only for everything. And then also if I click the today button, it um, allows me to change the date. So that's the only thing I've noticed with the dates. And uh, you can also use uh, piped text. So, you know, this is just an example to show you what these fields are here and like how to do the prefill for each uh, field type. But you wouldn't really want to autofill, you know, hard code and autofill your your data entry, but you could use it. Um, I have another example here uh, that this is how you would pipe this information in, like if you wanted to create, you know, sort of a header that carries like the participant information across other forms as you're, as you're doing data entry. And we've done this before for multiple projects. You would just create a descriptive text field and you would set your labels and your uh, piping, however you want to do it. But you could also do it with 
uh, the pre-fill. So if I wanted to do participant information, I could do the same participant information down here and I would just format it the same way. So I would just have name and first name, last name, and then I would hit enter, date of birth, gender, you know, my field of five live in Arizona. And then you can also do it to pipe values across. So if I have another checkbox field down the road that I want to auto populate with these values, I just have to say what, um, what field I want and I have to append a colon value afterwards. So this is like the visited field and then I'm basically just grabbing the values from that visited field. So if we look at the second form here, you'll see here that this is the piped information I was talking about. Um, and then this is the exact same information, but it's in a text box, a read only text box. And then you can see here that the uh, check boxes from the first form are automatically filled in for the second form. Now, one of the interesting things um, or one of the useful things what, for this prefill is that it allows you to use these values in a report. So if you have piped values like this, you can't use that in a report. It, uh, REDCap doesn't grab descriptive text fields in a report. So if we um, so if we just run this report here, you can see my participant info uh, that I've done with the prefill has that exact text formatted exactly, and it checks uh, the checkboxes for those the cities visited field as well. But you can see here that it doesn't have uh, the option for me to give the the descriptive text, you know, in here. So if you had something where you're concatenating values or, you know, doing something with your uh, text values and you're putting them in a, in a field for searching or that for reporting, uh, this is the pre-fill would be a good way for you to create a field to grab that data and then and uh, search for it. And, you know, because you, you have that data separately, you know, I could I could just have up here, you know, first name, last name, date of birth, gender. But, for example, if you had a list of um, pathology reports and you had uh, disease codes or something like that, instead of having an entire, you know, a bunch of check boxes for all those codes, you could just grab those values. Or if it's free text, something in like diagnosis of a person and it's free text, you could have those different uh, values and put them in one field with the prefill, and then you could use that as like one search area. So you don't have to do it for all of the other fields. Um, and then, so that's the prefill.